So they are the 12 that are going through, and we're getting ready. Pole position then, Mikhail Hishal in the red Group 2 GT500. Look at the beast. These cars are spectacular. They run with a lot of downforce. They're a very different driving style. Garnier in second position. The Frenchman will be in that grey machine. The black machine for Blaschan from Hungary. Two Hungarians in the final. Mauro Ricon doing it for Spain. Three Spanish uh, and lots of cheering going on downstairs. Kimo Kaisela still flying the flag for Finland. Appropriately in a blue car this time. Bruno Ferreira for Portugal in P6 in the yellow. Uh, Hugo has managed to spell his name wrong. Uh, well done, Hugo. Uh, Cusinelli, that should be, in seven. Lopez in eighth. We can't blame anyone but the drivers uh, who have spelt their own names and inputted themselves. Nussenbauer will be in nine. Ackerman in the purple in ten. Is that purple? That's yeah. a pink, really. It's kind of pink. Mm. Um, Bader in 11. And at the back of the field, Ivan Ortega for Spain. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of shouting going on there's down a lot, below. There's a lot of support for Bader, isn't there? You could say that uh, Ugo uh, Gooden spell his name right. It's kind of horrible, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm ignoring if that was a joke or not. I haven't even tried to work out if that was funny. Um, it wasn't. Short answer. <laughs> Castanelli. Uh, is uh, his new name and he sits in P7. Bit of tyre warming going on and then we will head down towards a very heavy braking zone at turn one. We are racing for the final of the Nissan GT Sport Cup here in Barcelona. We're transported across to Japan to Fuji. This circuit has only been available for three days and into the braking zone at turn one. Heysal invites Garnier up the inside. They're going to run side by side on the exit. These cars are faster than the GT3 machine. They are more reliant upon downforce. They have less slip angle. They wear the tyres in a different way, but they are hugely fun to drive and beautiful to look at. If you don't know about Super GT racing, I urge you to get onto the Nismo TV channel to watch all the highlights and all the live streams of the racing. This house missed the apex twice there in two braking zones, but Garnier hasn't been able to capitalise because Blajan is behind him in third position. Kaisler in fourth, Rico in fifth, and Gustinelli in sixth position. For the moment, no change. This is a much longer encounter than we saw before. No chicane, by the way, as Garnier runs wide and Blashan up the inside. Garnier loses the position. And this long sweeping right, left, right onto the start finishing straight. Was there contact yeah, between the contact. two of them? Blashan holds the inside line still. Garnier back well up done. to second. Nice work. That was uh, that was well recovered from Garnier as they head around this twisty and tight last sector. Completely different to uh, any other element of this track. That much is for certain. Already ending lap one of ten. I'm going to rely on uh, this and super fan and a good friend of mine, Jimmy Broadbent, for, for all your fun facts of the day. You might notice the rear wings very dinky in comparison to the rest of the car. It's because of the rules and regs for these things. So the rear wing it cannot be any wider than the car's natural configuration that's without all the body parts and that provides a very unique feel on the rear of the wings because oh, oh! there's contact sorry between Garnier and Blajan and I'm not sure whether that was Garnier spinning up the tires again lack of traction literally falling onto the point that I was just about to make but it means that the Frenchman from the front row of the grid is now down to P12 he's got a massive uphill climb Oh, we just get the replay slightly late there, but uh, I think he dipped a wheel over the curb and lost traction and spat himself into the inside wall. It's something that's so easily done in these cars because the downforce really makes a difference, really pushes the car into the ground. And as soon as you get a bit of slip, as soon as you get a bit of slide and sideways momentum, the car breaks away. And one of the favorites has gone to the back of the field. Loris Garnier is out of this and has left Hichal ahead of Blasham by just a second. Kaisler is only a second back and we can see them ahead of us because Kaisler has Rikon right behind him. Yeah, Kaisler's actually made a really good start looking at the, uh, the order of things. He's gotten ahead of Rikon and of course this is what our wonderful team of race stewards is here to decide whether Blasham will be penalised or not is pretty much going to be a direct answer to us on who caused the incident. Going back then to P5 of P6, we've got Custinelli up against Ferreira, up against Lopez, a close battle here for P5. Yeah, and uh, he's going to have a massive slipstream as well, Ferreira going into turn one, big braking zone, he's on the inside line, this should be an easy move 
on Gustinelli. Lopez is going to try and capitalise to go around the outside of the two of them. That's not going to work and it's going to push him wide as well. He needs to be careful on throttle. A little bit of contact between the two of them. And also trying to get into the mix there is, uh, is Ackerman in the purple machine starting to make progress from the back of the field. They have managed to sort themselves out. It is advantage Lopez as well. Ferreira up to fifth, Lopez up to sixth. Gustinelli down to seventh position, but they're all very, very close still. Still deciding, oh, a bit of contact there between Gustinelli and Lopez. Still deciding whether it's purple, pink, or dare I suggest it, magenta. Maybe a rare appearance. The wait and see, uh, certainly doing what he needs to in these early stages, Ackerman just keeping it clean, but these guys battling away for P5, they've lost so much time on the top four ahead. 2.93 seconds between Rincon and Ferreira. As Ackerman looking up the inside of Gustinelli, he's going to chuck it up there, and that is going to be a signed, sealed, and delivered move. Easy as they come. The Dutchman up to P7. He's got a long way to go as Bader there throws it up the inside as well. Brilliant late move. Brilliant opportunistic driving, and Gustinelli being punished for misspelling his name. He's down to P9. We think we've seen a change for third position. Rincon ahead of Keisler. Yeah. And look how close it is for the lead. Hissal and Blashan just three tenths of a second. We're on board with Blashan coming over the start finishing line. Hissal is massively defensive, hugging the barrier, hugging the white line on the inside. Oh, oh but Blashan dives to the inside line on the brakes and he's going to make that stick. Is he going to run deep? He does run deep. Hissal will cut back. They run side by side on exit. The track continues to go uh, left is the next turn and Blashan blends back in to second position. Very, very nice driving by the two of them. Blashan hugging that white line, that right hander, long, long, long right hander. Remember though, we've got a long race and we've got a pit stop. We have a saying in the Gran Turismo Championships, uh, Fivoros is ferocious and showing some of his teeth there. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, eat your heart out in many ways. That was such a good attempt to the move. Ultimately, Hizal with enough pace on exit to defend. Looking back now to Ferreira versus Lopez. Uh, Lopez trying to find his way up a, a gap which was simply non-existent. The gold car versus the yellow car. Ferreira holding on for now. I think that Blashan this pit stop phase, and we are looking more and more likely like a one stop across the entire field. This pit stop phase is going to be crucial. If he can make the undercut work, if he can dare go for the overcut, uh, he needs to consider his options very carefully indeed. It's incredibly close again for the lead, just two and a half to three tenths of a second between Hishal and Blasan as we continue to watch. Oh, and here wow. we go. It's happened very early on the straight because Hishal, I think, is heading to the pits. Yep, the German is heading to pits at the end of lap four, so Blashan inherits the lead. He was definitely under pressure. Is anybody going to follow suit, or is this a little early? There's a couple of guys at the back. Ackerman, Ortega, Lopez all into the pit lane. So about half the field pitting at the in the very middle of the race. And you can see how much fuel as well they are taking. They've got a lot of fuel left, actually. So they possibly could have gone a bit more varied on their strategy with the amount of fuel left, but it's also down to how much tyre wear, how much grip they have. Hichel comes back out in sixth, Lopez seventh, Ackerman in eighth, Bader ninth, Ortega, Gusinelli, and Garnier was the last to pit. So this is the phase that I always hate in endurance racing, when you've got half a load of people in pits and half that haven't. Thankfully, the graphics in GT Sport are so good that we know exactly what's going on. Rincon has a two second penalty. You know what, uh, this is the part which I absolutely love in uh, in this sort of racing because as all oh, oh, Kaisler is a off. massive moment. Kaisler is off and round. And that's a massive moment for him. The finish driver is going to stay in P3 for now, but that just seemed like losing it over the curbing, was it? Rincon's rocked on deep. Oh, wow, just mounting the curb. And so Rincon with a penalty, Kaisler with a spin. It kind of leaves Blashan in the second phase of pitters as the only one with a, an opportunity of winning the race. But yeah, I absolutely love this. These guys have pitted early for the undercut. They're trying to make the position on track work, but the tyres near the end of the race. This is where Blashan's going to come into his own. He pits now along with Ferreira and Rincon. Yes, but Kaisler stays round. out. Kaisler uh, is the only man now other than Nussbaumer, who's staying out for the moment, the only man not to pit, having had that spin. You've got to say he had that spin potentially because he doesn't have a huge amount of grip. Some fantastic pit lane graphics showing us exactly what's going on in pit lane. But where is Blashan going to come out in relation to Hishan? Who's ahead, I That's think. important. He's ahead. By half a second, Blashan yep. has managed to do the jump in the pits, and that is against form. He's done what 
is not conventionally called, but is an overcut. Blashan ahead of Hishal, and that is for the virtual lead of the race. But Hishal is there. Rincon is also in contention. Lopez is also in contention right on Rincon's tail. Lopez has had a brilliant pit stop phase, and he's actually going to be attacking Rincon here for P, uh, what is net P3. Rincon's worked down his penalty well, but it's what's invited his compatriot to battle him in this sort of fashion. Lopez oh. all trying to close the door in the opposite position that he was in the battle versus Pereira. The two Spaniards going side by side then into this next right-hand corner. Lopez still trying to hold on around the outside. Rincon holds on for now as we await Keisler to come into the pits. Great work between those two Spaniards. Lovely respect between the two of them. Not a huge amount of contact, just little bits here and there. Rincon still has to try and shake three tenths of a second off his penalty. He's done two of them on the apex there of uh, turn nine. Uh, Lopez, though, is close enough to certainly make a move in the braking zone going down into the final, uh, into the first turn. We're waiting Keisler, who is now in the pits. Keisler, remember, before was in P3. So how far down is he going to drop? I think he's going to be way out of P3. That was not a good strategic move from the Finn. And indeed, he's falling down further and further, further down the field. Horrible, horrible pit stop uh, strategy. We're going to have a change, though, for third. Lopez up ahead of Rincon and Ferreira dive bombs Rincon as well. Oh, and the Portuguese driver goes into fourth. Lopez in third. Hichal is second. A second separates Blajan and Hichal. And Blajan from row two of the grid now leads with just three laps remaining around this Fuji circuit. Now remember, Lopez, the last of our wild card entrants, of course, flying the flag for the wild card. Although, again, we kind of have to preface that by saying he is a very experienced driver, as that's a little bit deep from Ferreira. That could invite Rincon back into this battle for P4. Lopez, meanwhile, scampering up the road as Ferreira continues to hold on to people. Rincon again <laughs> looking for the gap. It's very, very close and Ferreira's oh, got a penalty, a penalty for colliding with another car. Interesting. So he's going to have to somehow get rid of it. A big error there as he just dips a wheel over the curb and onto the grass. Side by side between Rincon and Ferreira. Rincon drives down the inside. Again side by side as That's Ferreira wears away that penalty. But he drives around the outside. He gives him more of a slingshot here. And actually he might be able to get back down the inside in the braking zone for the final turn doesn't manage to make it happen but he's still very much there and very much in contention down into the first turn with that slipstream great work it's hungary germany spain spain portugal in the top five and i could have just outside in sixth and, uh, can we also uh, talk about uh, benjamin bader actually uh, down there in p6 we, we are going to have to remind our, our crew that we're going to lose visuals very quickly, uh, but hopefully that won't happen. We'll be able to continue to commentate on this race all right. Uh, Bader with a brilliant race overall, once again working his way back up the order. He had a lot to do from the beginning, however. Blashan and Hisal, they're getting close once again. Only five tenths between the two. I thought Blashan was starting to run away with it, especially since he will have fresher tyres at the end. Yeah, that's up true. Against, up against Lightning, though. He is going to absolutely have uh, his work cut out for him. It's just three tenths of a second between our top two now. It's dropping and dropping and dropping. They must be on the front straightaway. I think Hishal has got a slipstream. And indeed, I know they're at the back part of the circuit, but they're coming on to the final sector of the lap. And Hishal is it's going to be very much at the back of shot. And now going through the final sector. Blashan holds on, but it's too close to call between the two of them with now uh, just two laps remaining. Just, uh, just visually uh, impaired for a moment. Onto the front straight away though. Blashan has just got enough of an advantage at half a second to probably survive the slipstream, but perhaps the lunge, perhaps the dive bomb from Hishal into turn one. Maybe not close enough. Far back, way too far back for sure. He's, he's this is his setup lap, yep. essentially speaking. He can't make the move on this lap because otherwise he invites the opportunity for, for Blashing to, to get one back at him on the final lap. He needs to set this up right. Do keep an eye out on Lopez, watching brief there in uh, third with two seconds or so gap. If something was to go wrong, then we could have the most outstanding of stories of Lopez, a wild card driver coming in 
in his home country to win this. It is not all over yet. One and a half laps remain. And by wild card, we mean he turned up to the circuit to Catalonia. He bought a ticket to come and watch the Blanc Power Endurance race. He visited us in this tent to qualify. He actually bought a ticket only to come and qualify and not to watch the races as Rincon goes a little bit wide there. And that it would be, okay, he is a very, very respected driver in GT Sport with a different mark, but he's come here to try to qualify. And he was the fastest of the wild cards, about two and a half tenths of a second uh, faster than Matty Gallagher, uh, who was the second wild card qualifier. Uh, and he is on the podium and we are coming up towards the last lap. The gap now 1.3 seconds between Blashan and Hishal. Hishal has almost led every single lap of the racing of the races up to the final. He led the first part of the race, but his pit stop one lap before Blashan means he's got tires that are more worn and he's got to try and pass the Hungarian ahead of him. Battle for seventh position. Bader passes Kaisela. Kaisela should have really good grip. He only pitted a couple of laps ago and they still run side by side. We're winding ourselves up. There is only one winner. There's only one prize to go to the Nissan Festival and to visit the developers of the GT Sport game in Tokyo. And that goes to the winner. Will it be Blajan? Will it be Hishal? We've got about half a lap to go. Looks like Blajan running a little bit wide there, just using the curb and more. But the Hungarian is the favorite, was the favorite from the very beginning. Hishal was also one of the favorites from the very beginning. They provided some epic entertaining, some clean racing, and just one final sinuous sector left. Yeah, it's, this is tire wear. It's down to that pit stop phase. Hishal, whether it was out of necessity, I don't think it was out of necessity. He should have been able to call his teammates bluff on it. And Blashan's going to benefit. Simply put, there has been no challenge since they came out of the pit. And the Hungarian, after winning just a week ago in the Team Nations Cup at the World Tour, he's going to do it again. Patrick Blashan from Hungary comes towards the line. He's had a furious day's worth of racing and he takes victory here ahead of his teammate by 1.6 seconds. Hishal misses out a very sterling performance from Lopez to round off the podium and put a Spaniard on the podium here in Barcelona. But it's Patrick Blashan who is the Nissan GT Sport Cup winner for 2018. The first of a new series, a new approach from Nissan and fantastic entertainment all round. I hope you agree. Congratulations to Patrick Blashan. That was quite a race, but interesting that it did come down to the thinking man's yeah. race, the strategy. And honestly, that is that is what he's known for in Gran Turismo. They are, they are two sides of the coin. You have lightning, lightning by name, lightning by nature. He's all about the pace and it's the pace which led to his inconsistency, trying too hard, trying to find the edges of what was possible. I think he has bounced back in fine form today. Won his heat, won his semi-final in strong form, but ultimately as soon as strategy came into play, that is what gave Blajan the invitation. Winning from P3, mind you, as well, after uh, that mistake from Garnier. And, and what of Garnier? How would he have been involved had he not made the mistake? Yeah, absolutely. In the end, Garnier did not. Uh, he did finish outside the top 10 positions uh, quite a way back, probably gave up by the end. But uh, Blashan there, just 1.6 seconds ahead of Hishal, has the fastest lap of the race just to, to prove that he had the pace and did have to make it work. He did have to do some overtaking at the start of that race. Had to be careful. It's a very, very dangerous position to be in the second row of the grid. Made a good move into the first corner, get himself up into the top two. And then I think he probably would have had the pace regardless of the pit stop or not. All right, so we're just going to take a little look at the replays now. We will be back after those.
Just getting ready then for the presentations down in the Simpods. And just a, a few moments then to reflect on what we've seen over the last couple of hours. Just an incredible dram drama filled mm -hmm. afternoon, morning's worth of racing. It's, it's bizarre that it is the morning, isn't it? We've still got the rest of the day to you go in terms of the real life racing. Yeah, you have <laughs> been saying evening for the whole broadcast. By have the way. I really? <laughs> oh wow, excellent! You I can tell. Commentator for the Japanese. You can tell how used. Oh, maybe I am. Maybe that was my plan all along. No, you can tell how used I am to doing evening broadcast. Uh, but boy, oh boy, what a great tournament in general as well. We saw big names dropping out in the heat. And ultimately, we saw a reversal of, of the results that we saw in the semifinals coming to the to the grand final. Hizal had Blashan in his pocket in Bathurst, but when it came to the grand final, like you said earlier, the thinking man's game, Blashan was the one that ultimately took the honors. There were some great drives as well. Uh, uh, Koke Lopez, the, the local hero, to come home P3 from the fourth row of the grid. Uh, is pretty incredible, and there we can see pretty much clear confirmation that Garnier just got caught on the outside curbing. We've seen it as a consistent theme for a lot of these guys, actually, and it's those sorts of mistakes that are going to lose you so much. I mean, he, he was in with a chance of winning. And do you know what? And, uh, do you know who's right behind him? Who ha must have had to get out the throttle? Blasham was there. Mm -hmm. He could have so easily been caught up in that accident from yeah. P2. So he's quite lucky at that point. And we saw halfway through the race, the lap before Hishal pitted, they ran very, very close down that front straightaway and Hishal had to defend. And I think that moment, Hishal thought, right, I've been caught by Blashan now. Yeah. I'm going to have to pit to try and get some fresh tyres because at this point in the race, with the tyres I've got, Blashan is faster and he stayed faster for the rest of the race. Very much so. And it's, it's just... It's, it's one of those scenarios where sometimes you've just got to go with your gut and instinct. Because again, these guys are both team red line. So it would not surprise yeah. me personally, at least, even though I would say Blazhan was the, the more thinking man's driver, that they'd be going on similar strategies. And in a 10 lap race, there's not going to be much deviation. You'd think lap five, directly halfway through the race, might as well pit then. It forced Lightning into what we can now as assume, look at as a mistake. So very truly. Just uh, getting ourselves ready then. Uh, all of these drivers that qualified um, through the GT Sport with Nissan were invited here, brought here by Nissan uh, into Barcelona. They'll have an incredibly uh, privileged afternoon with uh, trips to the garage, trips to the grid of the Blanc Power Endurance mm -hmm. Series race and the hospitality. So it's not over yet. The racing might be finished, but they're going to have a wonderful afternoon here in scorching Catalonia. Um, but for one man, for Patrick Blashan, it's more than that. He can now look forward to going to the Nismo Festival. A thank you to all of the fans of the Nismo and Nissan brand over in Japan at the Fuji circuit under Mount Fuji. It's a stunning place to visit. And the Japanese fans, if they're a fan of something, they are fanatically a fan of oh, something. Yes. And that that festival, the Nismo Festival, has an incredible atmosphere and it's going to be a once in a lifetime for him. And also, as a fan of GT Sport, to be able to go and visit the HQ is a very privileged thing. Well, he's, he's going to be a little bit of a superstar at this point, because not only is he now categorically, this is what this has decided. He is the top Nissan GT Sport racer. But on top of that as well, he gets to meet the, the Polyphony Digital guys who, I mean, we've been watching him race for, for so long now, seeing him succeed in, in so many different disciplines of car, uh, let alone just the Nissans, of course. I tell you what, looking forward to the regionals and world finals of those championships, he has got a lot to look forward to, especially overtaking, getting one up on his art. It's been a fierce rivalry, despite them being teammates. Uh, but ultimately, in these sorts of situations, you're all lone wolves. You can all be in the same stable, but you're different horses racing for the win. Uh, he has got plenty to look forward to, as do the rest of the drivers, to be honest. I, I think looking forward to 2019, this more than anything shows that the calibre of just one manufacturer, yeah. uh, strength in depth are plenty. Yeah, and it'd be, it's very interesting to see that you know, the, the relationship between Nissan and GT Sport is that kind of, this is what the message has been passed from GT Sport to Nissan, this is what we would like to do. Yeah. Remember, there is an FIA certified manufacturers and teams championship. Mm -hmm. It's the only FIA certified esports event, and it's run on GT Sport. At some point, 
the manufacturers are going to start having to get behind that. And I think this is the first step of that, to mm. see manufacturers choosing their drivers like the Formula One guys have had to do um, in the Formula One eSports series. Soon enough, we'll have manufacturers, like football teams have eSports players. I think manufacturers have eSports players very, very soon. And this is a template that a lot of other manufacturers will be looking at and going, God, you know what? I think we should be doing that too. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. If you thought 2018 was good, let me tell you, 2019 has so many things on offer. Uh, I think all that we have to offer, though, uh, is coming to a close, Ben, as, yeah. as we near the, uh, the closing ceremonies. James, thank you very much for all of your insight uh, into GT Sport. Um, and uh, my name is Ben Colson Juris. Thank you for joining us. We're going to go downstairs now for the podium presentation with WTF1's Sweaty Matty G. It is pretty warm down here. Uh, here's the podium ceremony. So in third place, uh, presenting the award, is Gareth Evans, the marketing manager from Nissan Motorsports. Please come along. And in third place, Cloak Lopez. <laughs> in second place, presenting the award, is Dominic Y, the product, product manager from GT Sport. And in second place is Mikhail Hizal. And finally, last but not least, presenting the award is Mike Karkamo, the Global Motorsport Director from Nissan. And the winner of the Nissan GT Sport Cup is Patrick Blashan. Not only does the winner get a trip to the Nismo Festival and to Polyphonic Digital, but they also win a Thrustmaster TGT. Congratulations.